Seventh grade, unit six, lesson 22. Combining like terms, part three. Problem number one. Jada says, I can tell that this expression equals zero just by looking at it. Is Jada correct? Explain how you know. First, factor x plus five. Place x plus five on the outside and multiply it by negative two thirds, positive four, and negative 10 thirds. We can combine these like terms. Negative two thirds and negative 10 thirds is negative 12 thirds. And negative 12 thirds is equivalent to negative 12 divided by three, which is negative four. Now inside this parentheses, we're left with four plus negative four, which is the same as four minus four, which equals zero. Any value times zero equals zero. So x plus five times zero equals zero. So I agree with Jada. I have written out the steps for problem number one. You can pause the video if you like. Problem number two. In each row, decide whether the expression in column A is equivalent to the expression in column B. If they are not equivalent, show how to change one expression to make them equivalent. 3x minus 2x is 1x, or x. Now this expression is equivalent to 1x plus 0.5x which equals 1.5x. These two expressions are equivalent. I've written out the steps for problem 2a. You can pause the video if you need to. b, three times x is three x. Three times a positive four is a positive 12 or plus 12. Negative two times x is negative two x and negative two times a positive four is a negative eight. 3x minus 2x is 1x, and a positive 12 minus 8 is a positive 4. So this expression is equivalent to 1x plus 4. Since 1x plus 4 is not equivalent to 1x plus 3 or x plus 3, then these two expressions are not equivalent. Here I've written out the steps for 2b. Pause the video if you need to. C. 6 times x is 6x. Six times a positive four is positive 24. Negative two times x is negative two x, and negative two times positive five is negative 10. Six x minus two x is four x, and 24 minus 10 is 14. Now let's take a look at the expression on the right. Two times two x is four x, and two times a positive seven is a positive 14. So these two expressions are equivalent. 4x plus 14 and 4x plus 14. I've written out the steps for problem 2c. You can pause the video if you need to. D, three times x plus four, negative two times x plus four, and a positive 0.5 times x plus four. That gives us three x plus 12 minus two x minus eight plus 0.5 x plus two. Collect the like terms. 3x minus 2x is 1x plus 0.5x. That's 1.5x. 12 minus 8 plus 2. That's a positive 6. So this expression reads 1.5x plus 6, which is not equivalent to 1.5. To make these two expressions equivalent, we could change 1.5 to 1.5 times x plus 4. I've written out a different example for 2D. You can pause the video if you need to. Problem number three from seventh grade unit six, lesson 20. For each situation, write an expression for the new balance using as few terms as possible. A, a checking account has a balance of negative $126.89. A customer makes two deposits. One deposit was three and a half times as large as the other, and then withdraws $25. The starting balance is negative $126.89. The first deposit is plus X. The second deposit is three and a half times the first deposit, which can be written as 3.5 X, and a withdrawal of $25, or negative 25. Combine the like terms and you end up with 151.89 plus 4x. B. A checking account has a balance of $350.
A customer makes two withdrawals, one $50 or more than the other. Then he makes a deposit of $75. The starting balance is $350. The first withdrawal is minus X. The second withdrawal is minus X plus 50. And then finally, the deposit is plus 75. Look at the negative sign to the left of the parentheses. That means negative times a positive X. That's a negative X. So we have a total of two negative X's or negative two X. That negative sign on the outside of the parentheses multiplied by a positive 50 equals a negative 50. 350 and a negative 50 is 300. And then add the $75 at the end and you have 300 plus 75 or 375. So we've rewritten this expression with just two terms, 375 minus two X. I've written the steps for number three. You can pause the video if you need to. Problem number four from seventh grade unit six, lesson 21. Tyler is using the distributive property on the expression nine minus four times five X minus six. Here is his work. My thinks Tyler's answer is incorrect. She says, if expressions are equivalent, then they are equal for any value of the variable. Why don't you try to substitute the same value for X in all the equations and see where they are not equal? A. Find the step where Tyler made an error. B. Explain what he did wrong. And C. Correct Tyler's work. He's copied down the first step correctly, 9 minus 4 times 5x minus 6. He's even written down the correct second step where we have 9 plus a negative 4 times 5x and that negative 4 is also times the negative 6. That negative 4 times a positive 5x equals negative 20x, but that negative 4 times the negative 6 should be a positive 24 and not a negative six. So that's where he's made his mistake. To correct Tyler's work, we can rewrite it as nine plus a negative 20 X plus 24 or nine minus 20 X plus 24. We can collect like terms. There's one term with an X in it, so we can bring that down, negative 20 X. And there's two terms without the variable, nine and positive 24. Well, nine plus 24 is positive 33. So this expression is negative 20 X plus 33. I've written down the steps for problem number four, so you can pause the video if you need to. Problem number five from seventh grade unit six, lesson 13. A, if 11 plus X is positive, but four plus X is negative, what is one number that X could be? X can be any number that's greater than negative 11, but less than negative four. B, if negative three plus Y is positive, but negative nine plus Y is negative, what is one number that Y could be? Y has to be a number that's less than nine, but greater than three. C, if negative five plus Z is positive, but negative six plus Z is negative, what is one number that Z could be? Z must be a number that's less than six, but greater than five. Pause the video so you can read the reasoning for number five. If you haven't subscribed for my channel, please subscribe right now and watch another lesson. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.